you're going to find the interval of convergence for a power series, specifically the series from k equals zero to infinity of one over k plus one times x minus two raised to the power of k. I've already shown you the answer to this one, but here we're gonna work it out and see how we arrive at that answer. As always, for the interval of convergence, we'll use the ratio test to determine this. And remember that the ratio test, we're looking for this value p, that's the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus one divided by a sub k. So for this one, we just need to find what's a k. That's just whatever the expression is inside the series. And then for k plus one, we just replace all the k's with k plus one. So we get k plus one plus one, that's k plus two times x minus two raised to the power of k plus one. Then the value of p will just be the second one divided by the first one. So I'll write it this way, the limit as k goes to infinity, we'll have x minus two to the k plus one divided by k plus two, that's this right here. And then to divide by the other one, rather than writing this big nasty fraction, I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna multiply by k plus one divided by x minus two to the k. So I divided this by this, but as I did so, I did one quick algebra step and rewrote this and used the reciprocal instead to occupy that division. So now we just need to simplify this it turns out that just like in the first example we did, we have x minus two raised to a power here and also down here. And so as we start to cancel them, there will be one more on the top than on the bottom. So when we're done canceling, there will be one x minus two left in the numerator. So it simplifies like this. Now notice, as we did last time, that when we're doing a limit as k goes to infinity, only the pieces that involve k are significant. The x minus two doesn't have a k in it, so the limit doesn't really apply to it, which means we can actually factor that out. We can pull that out in front, making sure to keep the absolute values with it. If you pay attention here, you'll notice that the absolute values are significant and crucial because they are what lead to the interval of convergence. So it's very important to keep those absolute values on this answer at all times. Notice that for the second part, k plus one over k plus two, since k is always zero or greater, that's always gonna be positive. So in that case, the absolute values, while still useful, don't really do anything because it will always be positive, but it certainly doesn't hurt to keep them on there. So now all we need to do is evaluate this limit and notice that thinking back to your calc one or even pre-calc days, as k goes to infinity, the numerator and denominator are growing at the same rate because the powers of k are the same. And so this actually simplifies to that ratio of leading coefficients, which is just one. So it turns out that that simplifies nicely and p just equals the absolute value of x minus two. Then you need to remember the starting point here that when we're doing the ratio test, the goal is to find the values of p that are less than one. So according to the ratio test, this is what needs to happen in order to converge. So this series will converge, according to the ratio test, whenever the absolute value of x minus two is less than one. So when it comes to solving this inequality, you may have done this in some of your algebra classes, you may not, it's probably been a while if you have, and there are ways to remember how to do this. The easiest way that I can remember is that the absolute value of x minus two 
is nothing more than the distance between x and 2. So if you subtract two numbers and take the absolute value, what you found is the distance between those two numbers. If you know that one person is at mile marker 35 and another person is at mile marker 40, you instinctively know that there's five miles of distance between them because you subtracted, and if you subtracted in the wrong order, if you took 35 minus 40, your answer would be negative five, but you would mentally correct and say, they're still five miles apart. You would take that absolute value. So the absolute value of a difference is just the distance between those two things. So the easiest thing to remember here is that this inequality, when you read it carefully, tells you that the distance between x and two has to be less than one. Or another way to say that is that x can't be more than one step away from two. Or one unit away from two. Which is what tells us that x could be as low as one if you take one step down from two, or if you take one step up from two, it could go as high as three. So for instance, if we looked at this inequality and instead we had x minus two is less than four, then that would tell us we could be at most four steps away from two. So we could go down to negative two or up to positive six in that case. That's the easiest way I can think of to do these is when you set up your inequality, think about that absolute value of the difference telling you the distance between x and a, and then that has to be smaller than whatever you're given. In this case, that's one. So we found the interval of convergence, except for the fact that we don't know what's happening at one and three. So we know that between one and three, this series converges. We know that below one or above three, it diverges. We just don't know what happens exactly at one and at three. So we need to check x equals one and x equals three individually. And again, thankfully, this is generally relatively quick. So when x equals one, we take our original series, which was one over k plus one, times x minus two to the k. So if x is one, one minus two is negative one to the k. Then when x equals three, again we start with our original formula, one over k plus one times x minus two, in that case three minus two is just one, raised to the power of k. So we can simplify a little bit here on the right. one to the power of k is just one. So we have one over k plus one. And if you think back to your convergence tests from early on, you can relatively easily tell that this one diverges. It looks just like the harmonic series, one over k. That plus one doesn't change things much. And you can use the limit comparison test if you like to verify, but I'll just say that it fits the pattern of the harmonic series. And so I can, without doing the limit comparison test, already see where that's going to go. So we can verify that that one diverges as well. For the one on the left, notice that that will need the alternating series test because it's an alternating series. So we need to check the two conditions. One is that the limit of the non-alternating part goes to zero which it certainly does as k increases one over k plus one goes to zero. So it passes through the divergence test. And then we wanna verify that if you take this term and you move to the next one, so now if we add plus one to that, that's less than or equal to one over k plus one. And that of course is true as well. Since the denominator on the left is larger, the entire fraction is smaller. So based on the alternating series test, this one converges. And we're not being quite as thorough with our description of why these things converge or diverge, 
but just enough information is shown that we can verify what happens. All we're trying to get is an answer for each of those endpoints. So now we have our final answer. The final answer is that the series 1 over k plus 1 times x minus 2 to the k converges from 1 to 3, specifically including 1 and excluding 3. So you can write it in interval notation or you can write it with inequality notation. Either way is fine, but we've now found the interval of convergence. And as we've already pointed out, that interval of convergence is centered at 2, and that's why we call this a power series centered at 2.